Hi, Martin here. I'm just out on a three-day camping trip with my buddy Mark, and uh, we're camping in my hot tent. And I posted some pictures on Instagram and Facebook about uh, the hot tent setup and stove. And someone asked me, actually a few people have asked me um, over the years, um, how do I prevent snow melt? How do I prevent the heat of the stove from melting the snow and, and having the stove sink? And a lot of people have this problem. They end up with puddles and pooling and then the stove can shift uh, if it sinks on one side. Um, so there's some things that you can do uh, that will prevent this. Uh, a bow bed, um, if you're allowed to do that, if you're camping on crown land, a bow bed will, will help um, insulate your stove from, from the snow beneath. Uh, we didn't cut a bow bed this time though. Um, I did what I would ordin ordinarily do if there wasn't boughs available or if I was in a park and couldn't cut boughs or something like that. Um, what I did was uh, I insulated from below using a couple of techniques. Um, so let me explain a principle first though. Um, the stove is throwing out infrared radiation, heat, um, and it throws it out in every direction. Okay, this is a very, very big thermal mass um, expressing an awful lot of radiation. Um, wherever that radiation, say from here or from here, comes down and hits here, this is melt. So the floor used to be up here and this is melted. Now part of this is compaction because we've walked by here, but you'll see over here as well, there's been some melt in front. But right next to the stove, closest to the stove, there's no melt. And there's no melt because I have put wood there. And where you put wood or where you put anything that can absorb heat and serve as a thermal mass will absorb that heat. And if this is absorbing the heat, it's not the snow that's absorbing the heat and melting. So if you store wood around your stove, you won't get melt around your stove. And so I store uh, some wood behind over here. I've got piles of wood here. I've got my smaller pieces of wood over here behind uh, the stove and there's no melt there. You'll see there's no material here. There's some melt here, but over here there's no melt and that's because it's covered by wood and twigs and, and so forth. All right. And you can see how high the snow originally was and the melt that's happened around where there's no wood to protect it. All right. So it's all about having some thermal mass that can absorb that radiation instead of having the snow directly absorb the radiation. Um, now, how do I prevent things from melting directly under the snow or dire directly under the stove? I mean, well, it's the same principle. It's the same principle. I store wood under it. So that's one, one way to do it. You can store your wood under it. And if you have damp wood uh, or punky wood or soaking wet wood or wood that's covered in snow, you can put it right under your stove and it serves two purposes. It dries and it insulates the snow from the bottom of the stove. All right, so all this wood was wet, damp stuff. It'll burn really cleanly now because it's bone dry after having been under the stove for uh, a few hours. And then what I'll do is I'll take the wet wood that's dried and I'll burn that. And if I have other wet wood, I'll just substitute it, okay? So I'm constantly drying my wood supply and I'm constantly insulating from the ground. Now these are just dollar store cookie sheets. I have two of them and I have just notched them out with a pair of scissors to fit around the legs. All right, so that obviously reflects an awful lot of heat back. They're very, very light. And I've used these many times, as you can see. And I think they cost a dollar and a quarter, a dollar seventy-five, something like that each. All right. Uh, and then I have skids. Okay, so skids are just two pieces of wood and it depends on your stove leg. So this is a Nyko stove that has these folding legs, but they're steel legs. So you can imagine if the stove gets hot, the legs are gonna get hot. I wouldn't be able to touch this with my bare hands and that would melt right into the snow immediately. So I put down two pieces of wood laterally or the length um, of the stove. And those are my skids on which my legs rest. And I don't want them to slip and slide. So what I do is I take a saw and I make a little cut this way. And then I take an ax or uh, I baton with a knife and I just chisel out to the stop cut a little notch like that. And then I can rest the legs in there and it can't slide forward because of that stop cut. And the same thing in back. And I do that to both pieces. So the first thing I do is um, before I uh, install my stove, I cut two pieces of wood. They can be green or they can be dead. These are dead pieces of wood. I measure them against the legs. Just I just 
rest in the, near the legs and I see where the where I need to make my stop cut, I make a stop cut there, I make a stop cut there. I do that for the other piece of wood and then I just chisel out these notches. Then when I'm ready to set up my stove, the first thing I'll do is I'll put those two pieces of wood down. I'll put my skids in, in such a position that everything will line up for my stove pipe. I put my stove on it and I make sure that it's balanced so that it will not shift. It doesn't rock this way or that way. And I like this side of the stove, the back side of the stove where the pipe is to be a little higher than this. This is not level, it slopes down. And that's because when I light a fire, I want the, the main body of the fire to be over here, not under the stove pipe. Otherwise the heat just flies out the pipe and you can get a glowing red pipe and you're losing a lot of heat. You want your fire here that uh, heats up uh, the metal of the stove uh, and that will radiate heat out to the, the whole tent much better than if it's just flying out the stove pipe. But because the fire is here, the smoke has to travel to there. Um, and if the stove were level, it would have a harder time traveling up the pipe. The, the more canted your stove is, the more easily the, the smoke from over here will travel, naturally gravitate up the pipe. All right. So I set up my skids uh, and my stove initially so that it's level-ish, um, but a little lower in front and very slightly higher in the back. Now, when you're cooking eggs and things like that, you don't want it canted so much that your eggs all fall to one side of the pan or something like that, right? Um, so I don't want it uh, too canted, just enough so that the smoke will, will, will uh, travel up the pipe easily and not tend to back up right here so that every time I open the door, I get all the smoke in, in the tent, right? And if you do it this way, you'll uh, experience a lot less smoke in the tent when you open the, the door. And perhaps if you've got good draw up your pipe, you'll get no smoke at all. Um, so the, the lesson is simple. Uh, get your stove up off of the snow. I use skids that allow me to secure the stove so it cannot shift in the night. If, I, if I'm burning at night, I don't burn in the night, but if you do, or even during the day, you don't want your stove to shift. If it shifts and the the uh, pipes uncouple, you'll get a lot of smoke and soot um, and uh, dangerous gases in your tent, so you don't want that. So this makes, it, makes it, it absolutely ensures that this will not shift. I mean, I'd have to bump into it. It's really solid. It will not shift of its own. You'll notice there's no, no melt. I mean, look how high this is over here, right? This is really high. This is the, at, at the same height that it always was. The skids have not melted down it significantly into the snow. Um, the uh, cookie sheets, reflect tons of heat. They make a good tray for drying my wood. And if you stack wood all around the stove, uh, where you stack wood or put anything, it doesn't have to be wood, um, but it's good to dry your wood that way. Around the stove, you ensure that um, you have a thermal mass absorbing that radiation. And so the snow isn't, and so it's not melting. Um, if you get too much melt in front or on any one side of the stove, eventually things can shift. And this is just a simple way of drying your wood and uh, preserving your floor from, from melt. I've been doing this for years. I've never had a problem. And this is the first time I have camped in a hot tent in above freezing temperatures. Um, it rained yesterday um, for the last uh, few days, including today. It is above zero. It's above freezing. The floor was very, very soft. And this was sort of an, uh, an ideal test case of how well the system works to prevent melting. There's been no melt uh, in and around the, uh, uh, the stove that would cause the stove to, to shift. There's been no puddle, there's been no water, there's been nothing to shovel out or anything like that. Um, so if you're interested in, um, in doing this and making sure your stove doesn't shift, this is a good system. It's not the only way to do it, it's just the way I, um, I do it. I find it practical and easy, it comes sort of naturally um, and it works even in above freezing temperatures. Okay, uh, hope this helps. Thanks.